Thank you. I thought she was slimming. Well, the odd sherbet lemon can't do any harm, surely. Joyce, your office is crammed full with sherbet lemons. If someone spilled a glass of water in there, the whole place would foam up like a blasted laundrette. <laughs> Telegraph, please. One of those get-well cards with a fog on the front. Do I detect a hint of irritation this morning? Well, it's this stupid country. I mean, if one lives in India, it rains for a couple of months and then it stops. One does not need a weather forecast. One simply says, tomorrow is the 1st of August, it's going to pee down. <laughs> it's not raining. No, but it was at 7 o'clock this morning. And when that wretched boy shoved my telegraph through the box, it plopped on the mat like a bowl of Quaker oats. So that's it. Get him a milky bar at Christmas? You think you'd make an effort. What milky bar? Why, what do you do? Oh, a couple of quid at least. My God, those kids get up at the crack of dawn. And if your telegraph got soaked, just imagine what he looked like. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Although the misogynist who carved these earrings out of pure lead obviously didn't think so. Another five minutes, I'd look like Dumbo. <laughs> I don't know. All this fuss over a newspaper. I don't get it for the news. I get the Guardian for the news. I get it for the crossword. Anyway, it's not just that. Hope Wins parked that rotted little MG of his in my parking space again. Well, tell him. You tell him. It's your job. And you can also tell him that if he parks it there tomorrow, I shall quite simply park on top of it. Good grief. Hell hath no fury like a woman with a wet telegraph. <laughs> Incidentally, who's the get well card for? The first person who attempts telling me it's a good morning. <laughs> Now then, let's see. Mrs. Um... Barnard. Correct. I owe you 25 pence. <laughs> Got to go for the 50 or quit while you're ahead. <laughs> Mrs. Barnard's a bit nervous. Really? I've never had an operation before. All right. Now let me tell you something. And I tell all my patients this, but it's still true. When you go shopping in the high street, anything could happen. You could trip, get knocked down, cut your little finger on a price tag. And everybody just stands around wondering what to do. But in that room there, there'll be three nurses, two surgeons, one anaesthetist, and every drug you can think of. There isn't a single thing that can happen to you that one of them can't fix. You get an itch on your big toe, we've got a machine that can scratch it. <laughs> you get a low pulse rate, we show you a Paul Newman film. <laughs> and not only is it the safest place in the world, you get a really good sleep. And all we charge is the 25 pence you've just won up me. <laughs> Done? Done. Right here. Very impressive. Well, it's just a question of balance. Go too far and it sounds like we all have a good old knees up. I won't be long. Is everyone here? Good morning. <laughs> I have not mislaid it. It's oh. quite clearly theft. Someone has come in here and walked off with it. My God, this place is turning into an absolute hotbed of petty criminals. What's going on? Someone has stolen my telegraph. Oh, for Pete's sake, I thought it was serious. It may not be serious to you, but it's going to mean a week in intensive care for some light-fingered prole. Actually, mine's gone missing as well. Yours doesn't count. Two kinky bickers and a bingo card do not make a newspaper. <laughs> it's nothing to get worked up about. Somebody's borrowed them, I expect, one of the nurses. My God, where's my independence? Now, presumably, it's serious. Something wrong? Someone appears to have walked off with all the newspapers. Oh? Why should they do that? Well, that's a damn stupid question. They're quite clearly making a papier-mâché model of Mount Rushmore. <laughs> well, look, I've still got mine if anyone wants to borrow it. I do not read the Daily Mail. It's a woman's paper. <laughs> Actually, it's quite good this morning. Page three, especially. Don't you want it? Oh, I've got a couple more somewhere. <laughs> Page three? Yeah. You know. They have those in the Daily Mail. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone uh, know what's on the box tonight? Dallas. Uh, no, I meant the other side. <laughs> Dynasty. Channel 4. A documentary on lesbianism in 14th century Japan. Still, <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, won't do any harm to check. Thank you. I thought you never read the Daily Mail. I don't. I wanted to line a budgie cage. <laughs> that is typical of a woman. No sense of fun whatsoever. I don't call a woman with no clothes on fun. Then you ought to see that ruddy documentary. You might learn something. <laughs> Got some coffee. 
glad to see you're not angling for a quick peek. Well, I wouldn't say I'm not curious. I just think it's a bit... Uh, Degrading. I was going to say early in the morning. <laughs> I think it's preposterous. Sugar? No, thank you. It's him. What? It's him. Who? Hope Wynne. A picture of Hope Wynne. <laughs> Naked? Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> With a mop in his hand, <laughs> scrubbing the theatre floor like he's some kind of Royal College affiliated Hilda Ogden. What? <laughs> good grief. <laughs> yes, I saw his eye. It's quite good, isn't it? Good. Well, funny. Funny? Isn't it? No, it is not funny. Hope Wynne is not a top surgeon, he does not muck in, and he wouldn't know one end of a mop from a Pershing missile. Well, it's a load of pigs, Will. I took that for granted. Who took this photograph? I don't know. One of the lab people. Hope Wynne was using a new technique for tonsillectomies, and he wanted a record of it. Joyce, Hope Wynne wouldn't know a new technique if it was personally introduced by Hippocrates. Well, actually, I'm told it's quite clever. Oh, what does he do? Flush them out with a bucket of Domestos? <laughs> All I know is hoping was fooling around when they'd finished. The chap took a few snaps and the Daily Mail picked up on I it. I see. Daily Mail just happened to be wandering past at the time. Well, I suppose he got in touch with them. And you don't mind? Only the fact that I'm not in it. I got this glorious dress in Dickens and Joe. Joyce! <laughs> Surgery is a serious profession. If people like Hope Wynne insist on seeking publicity, before you know it, we'll all be doing summer seasons on Blackpool Pier. <laughs> Claptrap, you're just jealous. I would not be seen dead in the Daily Mail. You'd sing the red flag in Arabs to get in the Telegraph. <laughs> you, you see, the point is, my sterile gowns are just the same as everyone else's. They're all the same, yes. Well, of course, if it's a question of money, I don't mind Sorry, contributing. Sorry, I don't know what you mean. Johnny, take those to Dr. Haslam, theatre two. Well, I have heard you can get distinctive ones. Oh, I see. Name on the front, and that kind of thing. Like Mr. Olivelle's. Olivelle's got one? Not with his name on the front, no. He's got Kiss Me, I'm Sterile across the back side. <laughs> well, surely you see my point. Well, I don't really know. I mean, if Hope Wynne wants to be the Ken Dodd of ear, nose and throat, I can't see that it matters. Surgeons should not become media personalities. We should seek no other reward than the satisfaction of a job well done, like the Salvation Army, or the man who puts bits of stalk in tinned fruit. <laughs> I still can't see what harm it does. Jonathan, ten million people now think Hope Wynne is the be-all and end-all of nasal cavities. This time tomorrow, they'll be queuing up for his services like he's some kind of retired racehorse. <laughs> he's not a bad surgeon. Oh, rubbish. He wields a scalpel like he's receiving a lob at Wimbledon. <laughs> it's bad for morale. The other surgeons resent it. Well, no one said anything to me. No, they wouldn't, would they? But I can tell you an atmosphere of fury swept through this place like a horde of Visigoths. <laughs> well, luckily, I've never wanted to be famous. No, exactly. You're like me, content to be of service to the public. Well, partly. I just don't fancy every Tom, Dick and Herbert consulting me about his wart in Tesco's. <laughs> well, I think it's degrading and shabby. Incidentally, are we still having lunch tomorrow? Lunch? I don't remember you asking me to lunch. Well, actually, I'm not sure I did now. I was waiting to catch you in a good mood, but it never seemed to happen. <laughs> yes. Well, lunch tomorrow, then. Oh, I say, anyone seen my newspaper? Yes, thank you. I'm keeping it for posterior. I think you mean posterity. I know what I mean. <laughs> Degrading and shabby. That's the only word for it. So you said yes. And actually, it's two words. If surgeons insist on seeking oh, publicity, Oh, for God's then... sake, not Blackpool Pier again. Mrs. Sabatini, phone call. What, now? I'm just going home. Well, you're not going to moan, surely. You've been telling me for the last half hour you're a public convenience. <laughs> Well, who is it? Some radio producer. Yes? Mrs. Sabatini, thank God I've called you. My name's Bill Henney, BBC Radio 4. I produce a programme called Out and About. I don't know if you've heard it. We do a kind of round-up of what's going on up and down the Yes, country. I think so. Well, the point is, we're having a discussion tomorrow on professional women. And I thought it might be quite a scoop to have an actual female surgeon in the studio. You know, someone who's really taken the bull by the horns. Yes. So I wondered if you'd be prepared to take part. <laughs> really, that's wonderful. What do we do? We call it this evening? No, it's a live programme. Tomorrow lunchtime. Lunchtime? Listen, I'll hand you the mic here. She'll give you all the details. Jonathan! Oh, Michael. Have you seen Dr. Haslam? I expect he's gone home. Well, would you mind looking, see if his clothes are still there? 
I don't know what they look like. Well, it's not difficult. Start at cheap and work down. <laughs> There's two lots. Oh, for goodness sake. Mr. Sabatini. <laughs> underwear before. Though I must say, the last time I saw anything like that, they would run up a flagpole in the West Indies. That room is out of bounds to all female personnel. Then I suggest you remember that next time you park in my parking space. Jonathan? Yes? Jo oh, you are there. Good. Now, listen, about lunch tomorrow. What? I'm awfully sorry. I'm afraid when I said yes, I, I wasn't thinking. I've just looked in my diary and apparently I've got another engagement. So it'll have to be another time. I hope you don't mind. What about? Oh. <laughs> Look, can't you come out? You're patently deaf as a corn cob. Come in. No, I'm not dressed. What? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not dressed for, um... Well, that got blood to a few parts. It hasn't reached for a while. <laughs> Listen, about lunch tomorrow, I'm afraid I can't make it. Oh? Yes, I'm awfully sorry. Only it appears that I've got another appointment with a surgical instrument rep. Oh, well, no problem. It is nice of you to take it like that. Personally, I think it's a damn liberty expecting me to give up my lunchtime. No, what I mean is it's no problem because he's coming in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> right, about half past two. Neil Copeland talked about it this morning. <coughs> well, it may not be the same one. Well, they all flog the same stuff. Anyway, if your one comes, we'll tell Joyce to say you're in London. Having your picture taken for the Daily Mail. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, there, there was one other problem. Really? Yes, my car. I'm afraid it's got to go in for a service tomorrow. Well, that's all right. We'll take mine. Yours is working. Well, there's no need to look so astonished. <laughs> oh. So everything's hunky dory then? Yes. No, there was one other problem. What? Do you know it's gone right out of my head? I'll see you tomorrow. Yes. Fine. <laughs> I shall park my car wherever I please. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, I just don't think you're trying. Morning, Sheila. Now, can we please put some good old-fashioned British muscle into it? One, two, three. <laughs> Look, you've got already car parked in Parker. That is not the point, John. That is my space. <laughs> ah, Jonathan, just the person I was looking for. Come now, on, listen about me. Ralph, what happened to you? Huh? Oh, nothing. I was just taking some wheels off an MG. <laughs> Listen, about lunch. Take it you saw it last night. Saw it? Saw what? That programme. What the papers say. Made a complete meal of Hope Wynn. Really? Called him a state-subsidised buffoon. An insult to all the nurses and cleaners who do the real washing and scrubbing. Really? Yeah, it seems you were right after all. About what? Publicity. Always flirting with the media. Obviously, the whole thing's a complete minefield. Yes, quite. I mean, look what happens. One self-obsessed egomaniac steps out of the crowd and the whole medical profession's a laughing stock. Well, I wouldn't say the whole profession. National television, for Pete's sake. People are laughing their heads off in Gaelic. <laughs> Actually, I, I think they get their own programmes, don't they? What? Well, you know. Now, what the papers say, except for Scotland and Northern Ireland, where they have their own programmes. Make the most of your peat bog or something. <laughs> Sheila, is something wrong? Wrong? Yes, you sound a bit vague, as if you'd changed your mind or something. Oh, Jonathan. One hopes you know me better than that. I've said all along that I find the whole thing... Degrading and shabby. Yes. <laughs> I just wondered. Although I did feel you made some good points yesterday. Like what? Well points that made me reflect on, on what I'd said in the heat of the moment. Like what? 
Well, I can't actually remember any for word for word. You have changed your mind. I have not <laughs> changed my mind. I, I, I'm steadfastly against any kind of cheap, sensational publicity, as you now seem to be. Well, I only got it from you. Absolutely. I quite agree. End of story. Fine. <laughs> All I'm saying... Sheila! <laughs> It's a minor point, hardly worth discussing. What? Well, it just occurred to me that maybe, in certain circumstances, members of the medical profession appearing in newspapers or on the radio, for example, <laughs> could be beneficial in terms of public awareness as to what exactly the medical profession does. <laughs> don't you think? No, I don't. I think if it carries on like this, we'll all end up doing summer seasons on Blackpool Pier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Hulk Wing? Yes? I wonder, would you mind signing this for me? Where did you get that? I bought it. The woman on the kill said there were none left. I bought it yesterday. Oh, I see. Uh, yes, of course. Why? You lost yours? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, I have. Look, um, could I borrow this one? Thought I might make a photocopy. Why not? Everyone else has. <laughs> Joyce, if you don't wipe that grin off your face, I shall personally end you for the London Marathon. <laughs> But you've got to admit it's quite funny, all that claptrap about open wind. I meant every word. <laughs> Sheila, I've worked in hospitals all my life. I've mopped it up, I've flushed it away, and I know what it sounds like when I hear it. <laughs> Besides, if you meant every word, how come you're doing this radio show? This is different. It's a serious discussion and a serious topic. A gallon of Flash and a Bex Bissell are optional. <laughs> a serious discussion about what? Professional women. Prostitutes? Joyce! <laughs> I don't know. That's what it sounds like. Professional women. People like you and me. Breaking down the barriers of male domination. Oh, that. Well, I couldn't say no. I owe it to womanhood. Yeah. What? <laughs> you know what I mean. Yes, I do. You can count me out. Why? Because you lot scare me stiff, that's why. Because one day you'll get what you want and we'll all end up down a blessed coal mine. All right, all right. <laughs> now, listen. What I want is a couple of general sets. Some lame tissue forceps, but what I really want is one of those new laparoscopes. You can't. We can't afford it. Can't afford what? Any of it. This is the NHS. I have to mug a rep for a box of Kleenex. <laughs> Sooner or later, this is going to get dangerous. What do I say to my patients? You are invited to an operation. Please bring a bottle and a bowel clamp. <laughs> it is not my fault. Well, what can we afford? Maybe a swab. <laughs> and I purchase. Unless we get lucky and some politician gets run over in the car park, then the sky's the limit. That's what your radio show ought to be about. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I shall bring that up. A bit of table thumping might sound rather good. Exactly. Stuff womanhood. <laughs> Incidentally, what did Jonathan say? Hmm? Well, I take it you explained why you couldn't make lunch. Yes. In a manner of speaking. In other words, no, you didn't. Well, how can you tell him anything when the stupid man keeps changing his mind? One minute he's all for it, and the next minute he thinks any kind of publicity is tantamount to sheep molesting. <laughs> stupid man! If people have an opinion, they should stick to it and not go backwards and forwards like some kind of curb-crawling pogo stick. <laughs> oh, my God, is that the time? Why? Well, on the show in 45 minutes. My hair, my hair. Does my hair look all right? It's radio! I sound better with my hair's in place. <laughs> yes. Break a leg. Oh, my God, my bleeper, my damn bleeper's bleeping. All right, don't panic. Oh, God, that's so typical of this place. Mrs Sabatini, oh, yes, I'll just send 2,000 volts off a jumper. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Someone's bleeping Mrs Sabatini. This had better be good. Yes? Mrs Sabatini, Giles Peak on Lister Walk. Oh, Giles! How nice of you to call. I was just saying we could do with a good chin wag. Well, I'm sorry. I, I know it's coming up to lunch, but we've got a bit of an emergency here. Mrs. Barnard, internal bleeding. Well, can't you get the registrar? Uh, not really, no. Why not? He's gone for a job interview. <laughs> Someone else, then? Well, I have done. So what's the problem? 
the only person I could get was you. Giles, I am in a rush. I have an appointment. Well, I'm just not sure what to do. Tell her to stop bleeding. <laughs> what? <laughs> Giles, I'm sorry. Now, is it serious? I think it might need surgery. All right. Well, calm down and I'll be there in a minute. Maybe they need someone for book at bedtime. <laughs> Hello, can I speak to Mr. Bill Henry, please? Sheila. Watson. <laughs> I was just talking to you to tell you I can't make lunch. I've got to do this operation. Oh, how strange. I was, I was looking for you for the same reason. I'm working with you. No one else available, apparently. Oh. Bad luck. You too. <laughs> Be long in a minute. Oh, there's no rush. They've only just sent for the patient. Oh. It's a bit ironic, isn't it? Ironic? Being a doctor. I mean, here we are, healing the sick, patching up the wounded, and every damn one of us has got an ulcer because we never get any lunch. Yes. <laughs> All except Hope Wynne, of course. He's never missed a lunch in 20 years. That's the difference, I suppose. I'm sorry, I, I don't follow. Dedication. I mean, while he's doing his level best to get on Wogan, we just get on with the job. Which is what he wants to be famous for doing, except he never does any because he's too busy trying to be famous. Yes. Like you said. If you're not content with being a surgeon, why be a surgeon in the first place? Yes, look, Jonathan, I Patience just want... arrives. Hmm, that was quick. What? Nothing. I'll be there in a minute. OK. Back again, Mrs Barnard. I'll have to give you a season ticket. <laughs> right, sir. It's just one of those things, I'm afraid. You see, being a professional woman, one is sometimes called upon in an emergency. Oh, I understand perfectly. The patient comes first. Yes, I really am very sorry. No, no, no. Like you said, it's one of those things. Bit of a shame, though. Yes, I, I, it is. I, I was really quite looking forward to it. Mm, Jonathan said you'd be perfect. <laughs> Jonathan who? Jonathan Haslam. He's an old mate of mine. Well, not a mate exactly. <laughs> we went to school together. He suggested you in the first place. <laughs> Actually, I was trying to get that other chap. Uh, what's his name? Hope Wynn. God, he's a laugh, isn't he? <laughs> anyway, listen, how about if we set up another date? Uh, we've got a slot free on a Monday week. Hello? Hello, are you still there? We're ready. Jonathan, if I ever speak to you again, it'll be because I'm conducting my own defence in a case of assault and battery. <laughs> Something wrong? Didn't even want me. Never even heard of me. No. Well, just a question of nerve, I suppose. What? Well, all we need is a bucket. Thank you. 